You're not seriously trying to set up the eye control. Yes, I'm going to do it. You I get do disappointed it every time you try witness, this. Okay. No. And I've been told you just have to mash your eye a little bit more. I'm going to try. You're going to shoot the camera with your eye mashed into the EVF. That's going to be so not uncomfortable. Eye control, not tech. One more time. Like it's time. It's working great. And it says, Chris, it's so good to see you again. Your beautiful, perfect eyes. Welcome back DPV TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here and I'm joined by Evelyn Drake from the camera store TCS TV. Thanks so much for having me, Chris, or thanks for coming over here to talk about these cameras today. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, it's your place. Uh, but no, hey, we really appreciate you helping us out with this project. So the purpose for a video today, we had an interesting project in mind. Um, Richard at DeepReview.com, he did a test with the Olympus OM-1 versus a flagship mirrorless camera, the Nikon mm -hmm. Z9. And the idea is that we've got these cameras that are affordable, compact, but on paper, maybe they've got a lot going for them as far as a sports camera goes. Okay, now right off the bat, I think it's important to state, we're not saying that this platform is gonna compete directly with this platform, right? No. I mean, we know that, we know that. Yes, absolutely, yeah. full frame versus micro four thirds here. But when you look at them on paper, it's kind of intriguing because they're stacking up very close together. And we can't forget that these also both have stacked CMOS sensors. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, great electronic shutter shooting. We wanted to test that as well. So that was kind of our goal. And we wanted to keep the lenses as similar as we could, short zooms, fast mm -hmm. zooms. So yeah. um, I have my OM Digital Solutions Olympus OM-1. <laughs> oh my <laughs> Lord, he's being so oh. good and saying it properly. Yeah, you're, the name on your camera is so much easier. And I got a 40 to 150 f2.8. And actually, I, I, one of the benefits of my four thirds is I did like having that 300 millimeter equivalent for shooting hockey. Yes, I was mildly jealous about that, but we have Canon's R3, which is basically a purpose-built sports and action camera. I mean, I had, I don't have it on right now, but I had the 70 to 200 f2.8 lens, Great which lens. is an awesome RF lens. Yeah. Now, big thanks to you for hooking us up with a really good event to shoot. Yes, yeah, so we had a bit of a hockey hookup because a little while ago when we did our trio video, we shot the Canon EOS R3 versus the Nikon Z9 versus Alpha 1. Uh, you can check it out on the Camera Store channel. We were actually welcomed back by the team photographer of the Calgary Connects. I mean, his name's Dave Watling, who I'm hoping to do a live show with soon. Um, but yeah, it was a great experience to be able to shoot them while they're in their playoffs. These guys were amped up and it was just a really fun, whirlwind, intense game. It was, and you know, Max Bellarina, what actually blew me away, the lighting was actually really even, it's really, really bad, bright. Right? Yeah, it was really good. I feel bad because Richard, he shot his test. Uh, he was doing outdoor rugby at night with floodlights, and he said he was like two to three stops darker. So we oh, had a really, I know, it was so bad. He had a real advantage there, but what he didn't have to do is shoot through plexiglass. We didn't. We did have to shoot through the plexiglass. It tends to be really scratched up. Sometimes there's yes. lots of smudges and fingerprints and stuff like that on it. Um, so it does give us that disadvantage yeah, for sure. I mean, keep that in mind. You know, like the shots in the sample gallery, especially when we're shooting down close to the side of the, of the rink, you're shooting through curved glass, so there's gonna be softness. Yeah. But really that's okay. I mean, that was equal for both cameras and we're really trying to test, can it stay in focus? Can it burst and follow in track? That's really what we're looking for today. Okay, so we have our respective computers out so we can yes. take a look at photos. We're gonna talk first about burst rates because these cameras are sports action cameras, they shoot quickly. And I should mention the first period we shot just electronic shutter to get the fastest burst rate possible while still having autofocus. I mean, that was key for us. Yeah. And the other thing I wanna mention is I was quite surprised I didn't have any problems with like white balance changing. I didn't have any problems with exposure or flicker. So I was pretty impressed. How about you? you see yeah, I was very happy with the results in that way as well. Um, now, of course, as you say, we were both shooting at our maximum. So I was shooting at 30 frames per second mm -hmm. and you were shooting at 50? Sure, I mean, <laughs> it's an advantage for the OM-1, absolutely. I mean, you can shoot 50 frames per second, I could even go 120 if I don't want autofocus. But frankly, I felt like I was just doing quick bursts here and there. If I did a 50 frame per second burst from the guy skating towards, like, you'd buffer out, it was too many shots. I scaled it way back. 
It's worth mentioning that I didn't always shoot in the highest frame rate as well. Yeah. I tend to scale it back a little bit. I find it really satisfying when you can sometimes time your shots when you're shooting sports. Yeah, I tend to be a little bit lighter on the shutter See, that way. That's what I should be doing. That's what a pro is supposed to be doing. I just drop my frame rate to like 15 so I could just machine gun the whole yeah. time. But you know, it, and it did work. I was happy with that. Actually, one thing that I was really impressed with on the OM-1, which I've used before, is the Pro Cap mode. Mm -hmm. And it still blows my mind that Nikon and Canon and Sony don't have something similar. Why not? But I really liked it because, you know, rather than do machine gunning of shots and bursting off frames, right? I, there was lots of scenes where I could tell that, you know, the, the players are coming towards an opponent's net. I could just get the camera focused on the goalie and then start the pro cap mode and I'm not burning off frames. I'm just waiting for the action to happen. Yes. And then if I see something happen, I hit the shutter and I know I've caught it. And you even got if it. My time is and on. you got some pretty cool things. You got actually the puck going into the net yeah. and you also got a stick flying in the air. Yeah, that was wild, right? I mean, it's the situations where I don't even see a player or a puck or anything, but all of a sudden a stick flies through the air <laughs> and all I have to do is hit the shutter and I know I've caught it. So that was pretty cool. It's so, a very cool feature. It like, is. especially, I mean, it was great for sports, but it would also be excellent if you're shooting wildlife or something like for that, sure. because if you see something, you know, in the corner of your eye happening and you get the shot, you know that you're going to get whatever happened just before that. You know, the frame rate through the viewfinder drops a little bit, but I was surprised that I was still able to track players, even though it looked like I was playing like an old 8-bit video game. Overall, I think that is actually a huge advantage for Micro Four Thirds. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is autofocus. This is a big one. It's the biggest one. I, yeah, it really yeah. is. So for the first period, um, you and Jordan insisted that we all shoot continuous autofocus plus tracking, which is really mean because I was terrified. He, and the fact is Olympus's tracking has never been good. And, and they even say it themselves. And I say Olympus because when we were testing older cameras like the EM1 Mark III, they would basically say, yeah. look, we love our autofocus as long as you don't use continuous autofocus plus tracking. Like I've never had a company say this feature. There was, yes, yes, there's moments. Don't use don't it, use right? it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so then OM Digital Solutions, they said, yes, we've advanced our autofocus. You know, we've got the quad pixel array. Everything's better now, but the continuous autofocus plus tracking is basically the same. Don't use it. And here you guys are making me use it. So anyways, while I calm down. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Sorry, well, guys. I just, I'll take a breath and relax. Why don't you tell me about your experience with the Canon EOS R3, which I love. Well, my, my experience was fabulous. Sure and I know your experience has been fabulous too. I'm sure it was. Um, I mean, the thing about the Canon EOS R3 is that the, the dual pixel autofocus too is fantastic. It works great. The tracking's amazing. It's so sticky. Um, we love how it works, but the one thing with this camera is that it is incredibly customizable. There are more ways to select and to work with the autofocus than I think pretty much any other camera on the market. And because of that, this means that this is really a pro tool. So there are more ways to, to finesse it and make it perfect, mm -hmm. but there's also more ways to that. That's true, but you know, you also have so much control. Like I love the eye control, you know, where it follows your eye where you look. That worked really well for me. I know it doesn't work well for you or anybody else work. that we talk to. <laughs> or me. Like the Olympus, it's a very simple system. I can adjust sensitivity and stuff. That's about it. I'm basically trying to get one box on a subject and start tracking. And here's the thing. I actually had a really good experience with the OM-1 when I was using tracking with subject detection, like mm -hmm. birds, animals. Then it worked really well but it doesn't work with people. And although it has eye detect, I don't know what it was. The clear visors, didn't matter if they were close or far, it just didn't want to pick up the hockey player's eyes in this particular situation. And once or twice I'd get an eye box, but otherwise it was basically the chest or wherever that, that focusing point started. But what about you? Yeah, I mean, with Canon's eye detection, if they're fairly close in the frame, you see the box actually go around their eye. Otherwise, you know that it's tracking more like the head or the helmet. Um, that kind of thing, <laughs> um, and it worked great. <laughs> so, how was your hit and rate? my hit rate was was quite good. I mean, it's not perfect, um, it's not infallible, but it's very good. So, here's the thing: I was I was feeling the worst, right, about this. I'm like, this is gonna be terrible. You were a little grumpy. I was. Was I a little grumpy? Okay, it was only for 15 minutes, one period. So. The thing was, the tracking actually worked surprisingly well in simple situations. So what I mean by that is if I have one player going down the ice and I get the tracking box on them, yeah, I was on their chest, not their face, but the depth of field covered it on Micro Four Thirds. And uh, it worked okay. If another player came in though, I would just see that tracking box start going everywhere. Sometimes it would go to people in the stands, sometimes it would go to a player in front, and it was just so unpredictable, and that's what was scary about it. I just didn't have that, that confidence in it. 
Yeah, where I would say with the Canon EOS R3, I was able to pick up that predictability and I, I kind of knew how the camera was going to behave. I could again fine tune it the way that I wanted. It was a very enjoyable experience from that perspective. Fine. Okay, so for the second period, we decided to go to a more classic continuous autofocus using a zone, right? I mean, Gordon, you can have central zone, you can move the zone around, um, you know, touch screen or using the back joystick controller, but still... I have a smart controller. Yeah, yeah, of course you do, <laughs> of course you do. But you still don't have the benefit of, of the focus following a player, even if they move left or right in the composition, right? You gotta keep that zone on the player. Yeah. And it, it is hard to go back from, from using such sophisticated tracking. Um, to, Except to... my case where it wasn't that sophisticated. <laughs> but, we, but it's worth mentioning that a lot of sports photographers these days are still shooting with DSLRs. Um, in fact, the team photographer that helped us out, uh, Dave Watling, he's still shooting with DSLRs. He gets fabulous photos, and sure. so he's still focusing in that more classic way. Yeah, you're right. I mean, if you learn how to use it properly, it can be very effective. And frankly, I mean, let's talk about our, our results on it. So what I found with this is that although it wasn't the same experience as tracking, I mean, we've become so accustomed to it on a lot of the, the full frame mirrorless cameras, um, it worked quite well. It was easy to move. You had the whole frame to work with in terms of which zone you wanted to focus on, uh, but certainly my compositions felt a lot more rigid because I was having to worry about that a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, I got the same thing, right? I mean, second period, most of my subjects, the players are basically in the middle of the shot. And of course you have the classic problem that if something comes in between you and what you're, you're shooting, it's gonna focus on the closest subject, right, automatically. I was able to adjust the sensitivity. You can see here a scene where the referee comes through and it ignores them. You know, you still have to set that kind of stuff, but largely, yeah, whatever's closest, that's what you're gonna get in focus. There was lots of shots where I wish I was able to focus on players, you know, behind the scrum or like deeper mm -hmm. in, just couldn't do it. How was your hit rate? My hit rate was good. I mean, I, I was very happy with the results. Um, however, from the experience side of things, I was happy to move back over to, to tracking. Right. I, I shot the rest of the game without using tracking, obviously. And um, again, the Olympus's hit rate is actually really good using zone focusing, just with all the limitations that we talk about. Okay, so our last topic, let's talk about image quality. Depth of field first, because honestly, this is kind of a weakness for micro for thirds. And I was looking at your shots and I'm, I'm actually pretty envious of a lot of the shots where you get nice separation, the background's going softer, and it just isolates some of those players up front a little bit nicer. It's a completely different look. And if we're shooting at the same apertures, I mean, I do get a lot more of that separation. And so whatever it is that you're, you're photographing, you just, you have that extra element. I mean, yes, I'm getting more depth of field. Sometimes that was nice, right? It's a mm -hmm. little bit more forgiving if the focus isn't quite there. Yeah. And you know, if there's a group of players, sometimes I'd get enough depth of field that I could tell more of the story that way. Yeah, I guess it depends on what your, your end game is. But of course, if I wanted to have more depth of field, um, then I can just stop down, raise my ISO, and then I'm kind of at that same, we have that level playing field. So I have the advantage when it comes For sure, to depth totally. of field. No doubt. I mean, it's a full frame sensor um, versus micro four thirds, and then that's just the reality of it. Now, you know, another thing I want to talk about here, I noticed with your shallower depth of field, mm -hmm. when we were shooting right behind the net together, that plexiglass was disgusting. It was like, oh, it was the, puck hits. It was the worst yeah. spot. It Lots was, of damage. It was a cool spot, but it was the worst spot, for yeah. sure. And like, I'm looking at some of the scuffs, and because I have more depth of field, they're like white they're, blobs, yeah, yeah. yeah. And here, like, you can see it here. It's just, it's like a, mm, just a touch of loss. It's subtle, it's just like a little painterly Duh, softness to it. It's, it's a lot nicer. <laughs> I don't even wanna talk about it. So let's talk about something else where I'm gonna lose as well. Sure. Just, just the image quality overall, right? So 20 megapixels versus 24, not a yeah. big deal, but again, there is a benefit there, but of course you got the larger sensor. I have a larger sensor, better yeah. light gathering ability. I'm gonna perform better at the higher ISOs. Yeah, like just the way it is. We we're shooting 2,000 the second at f2.8 for most of the night, and roughly 1,600 yeah. ISO, 2,000 ISO. You know, on on a micro four thirds camera, it's not the worst thing, but you yeah. notice it. Well, possibly. and I can I can push it on 1,600 comfortably, um, but yeah, you really you don't want to go about that. No, and so, you know, we're lucky that we had good light. I could see if I was using this camera outdoors, you know, on a bright day or something like that, no problem. But if the arena was any darker, I'd really be pushing. So I think the thing with the Olympus, oh, it's not Olympus. And so the thing about the OM Digital Solutions cameras, if I was shooting in nighttime conditions or a dark arena or like poor Richard had to deal with, yeah, yeah it's, it's not gonna be nice. It's gonna be brutal and it really limits uh, what lenses I can get away with. And I think to your point, I really think that the strength of it is gonna be like your outdoorsy, like bring it on adventures and things sure. like that. And to do some sports as well, I mean, soccer mom, soccer dads, hockey dads, it's gonna be great. But sure. in, as you say, in, this was a very nice arena, but if you're <laughs> shooting somewhere 
a little bit more questionable, um, you're really going to run into some of those problems. The key thing is I have to manage my expectations with the OM1, curb right? Curb your enthusiasm. I have to curb my enthusiasm about it. Like, yeah, I just have to accept. If it's going on Instagram or maybe going on the web, it's going to be okay. But if you have more demanding needs, that's going to be one real reason why you might need to pay the bigger price point and jump up to a, a much, professional camera. Yeah, yeah. Buy the more expensive one. Worth it. So Evelyn, on that topic, just how much more money would someone have to spend to get the kit you shot with? Well, Chris, they would have to spend a lot more money to spend to get how the kit. How much more is a lot? <laughs> well, if we're talking in American dollars, which we are for some reason yes. on this show yes. that you're shooting in Canada. Because it'd be sound even uh, worse than Canadian dollars. <laughs> that's true. Uh, it's 5,000 US dollars more. More than the kit that I was using. Yeah, like, yes. I think that has to be appreciated. I mean, the OM1 oh, yeah. is absolutely a rugged, professionally designed camera with very fast burst rates, decent autofocus. I mean, for a very affordable price point. And it kind of brings it back to why we even did this experiment, why we did this test. It seemed a little bit silly, maybe a bit unfair in some ways, but I think the point that we wanted to make is that they've been putting all of these great technology features into the flagship cameras. Like we're talking about Canon, Nikon, Sony, um, and we're always saying, oh, how great will it be when it starts to trickle down throughout the lineup? In a limb, in in OM Digital Solutions case, they have a great package for significantly less. And of course, we're talking about having a stack CMOS sensor, a fast scanning sensor, usable electronic shutter, and a lot of the same kind of specs that we're seeing in these high-end flagship cameras that cost. 5,000 US dollars more <laughs> when we're looking Absolutely. at the kits with the lenses. You know, and, and there's other benefits. I mean, okay, image quality, it's not as good as yours, but it was better than your son Liam's Olympus TG3 that he was using. <laughs> uh, we can at least say that well, Liam, definitively. I mean, it wasn't fair to Liam. We gave he's him asking kind me of to a, buy, He's yeah. asking me like, uh, Uncle Chris, can, can I, I use your you? camera? I'm like, no, I'm sorry, you can't use my camera. No, I let him use mine for a little bit. It's I, almost I 9,000 US dollars. And I was, I was terrified. I was like hold, <laughs> gripping it. Yeah, and of course we were hand holding these cameras. And I mean, we Dave were. is Dave's there shooting with his SLR, shooting the game. Of course, he's using a big monopod, right? We yes, don't have to. Yeah. But I do have to say that, you know, shooting a full game plus a little bit beforehand um, with my setup, I mean, I was starting to feel it a little bit by the end of the game. So it's interesting. I actually had no problems. I was even thinking that conscious. I was like, oh, I'm surprised. It's really not painful at all. Uh, and, and I'm using a lens that's quite compact, uh, what, 500 grams less, quarter of a knock, less weight than your kit. And your 7200 is very compact. I'm getting a 300 millimeter full frame equivalent you know, for way less weight. That's so that's true. also another big advantage, I think, for, for the and OM Digital Solutions system. Yeah, say if you are someone that shoots your kids' sports or something and you want to have everything in a nice, compact bag, um, you know, you can, you can carry a lot of glass with it. There's some advantages there, for sure. Well, thank you so much for helping us out with this video, Evelyn. Really appreciate it. Of course, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And of course, we have to give a huge thanks to the Ken Bracco Arena at the Max Bell Center and the Calgary Connects Junior A team and their team photographer, Dave Watling, for helping us out, uh, giving us such great access. Absolutely. So please check out the Camera Store TV's channel. Lots of great videos there. And Richard also has his article. You should check it out, deepreview.com. Links in the description below, where he compares the OM1 against Nikon Z9. With, with rugby. rugby. Yeah, so a very interesting use case there as well. And uh, do check out our sample galleries we shot for the hockey game, plexiglass included. Uh, definitely check that out as well. And uh, Evelyn, uh, I'm going to call it to the subscribers now, but just so you know, your husband's going to put like subscriber buttons over your face, which is like super disrespectful. Anyways, please do click on the subscribe button. It's right there. We really appreciate you guys doing that. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again for another episode of Deep Review TV.